Parents, hey students, welcome to another edition of Math is Still Math. Today, we're going to be looking at the 8th grade study guide for the second nine weeks 2018. So, let's get into it. Starting with problem number one. Okay, so uh, this is systems of equations. Now, if you look up systems of, systems of equations, there are a lot of ways to do these. So I'm just going to go over the basic route that we've been using in class, and that is setting them equal to each other. Because we want to know when these two lines would cross, or if they would ever cross, depending on how it works out. So for number one, when it says... One solution, infinite solutions, and no solutions. I guess I should just go ahead and explain what that means if you didn't know. These are linear functions. If you, They have inputs and outputs. If you plug in an X, it'll spit out a Y, and you can graph these forever. The question is, do they cross ever? And when we say the solution to a system of equations, that is when these two lines are in the same place at the same time. So if they cross once, we say they have one solution. If they are the same line, they're on top of each other, that means they have infinite solutions. No solutions means that they are not the same line, but they have the same slope. They are parallel lines. They will never cross. So really, that's what we're trying to determine here. Just in this case, we don't have the graph. So let's see if they could exist in the same place at the same time. I'm going to number my scrap work like always. All right, so because these are both equal to y, I can set them equal to each other like so. 5x plus 10 is equal to 3x minus 8. And now we just see if it comes out with any kind of a solution. So what we're going to do here is some undo steps. Um, this is an equation, so whatever I do to one side, as long as I do it to the other side, the seesaw stays balanced. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take away 3x from both sides. 5x minus 3x is going to yield 2x. I still have plus 10. Now 3x minus 3x does something very interesting. Uh, they eliminate each other because 3x minus 3x is 0, and that's what we wanted. I still have a negative 8. Now I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. I will have 2x eliminate equals because 10 minus 10 is 0. Negative 8 minus 10 will be negative 18. Okay, still going down the ladder. Now, okay, so this is 2x. That means this is 2 times x. So we want to do the opposite of that. What is the opposite of multiplying two? It's dividing by two. So we just toss a fraction bar underneath both sides, divide both sides by two. This is another elimination because two divided by two is one. One times x is just one x. So we're lazy, we just write x. Negative 18 divided by two is negative nine. So here's what this means. This means that these two lines are going to cross each other when x is negative 9. They cross. They cross at x equals negative 9. And that means they cross one time. Which means. The answer number one is a they have one solution. Let's move to number two. Okay, so number two says 3y equals 4m plus 8. I'm going to number my scrap paper like always. And y equals 2m minus 4. Now, mm, these don't equal the same thing for now. So my system of equations is 3y equals 4m plus 8. y equals 2m minus 4. 
Now, this is where we're gonna get very sneaky. We are going to engineer a way where they do equal the same thing. Look at this second row. Y equals 2M minus 4. Well, you know what? I could turn this into a 3Y by multiplying by 3. But here's the catch. If I multiply one side by 3, I have to multiply everything on the other side by 3 as well. So let's do that. I'm gonna multiply everything. I'm gonna multiply the Y, the 2M, and the negative. I'm just gonna multiply every term by three. Okay, so our new system of equations, I mean, it's the same system, but the new way we're gonna look at it, the top row did not change. 3Y equals 4M plus eight. Now the bottom row is gonna get tripled, but it's okay because as long as I do it to both sides, Everything stay, is, everything's gonna stay balanced. Three times y is three y, that's what we wanted. Three times two m is six m. And then three times negative four would be negative 12. Aha, now this is very similar to problem number one, where they are equal to the same thing. They're both equal to three y, therefore the two sides are equal to each other. Four m plus eight is equal to six m minus 12. This is where I get to start doing my eliminations to see what happens. So I can take away 4m from both sides to end up with 8 equals 2m minus 12. So far so good. I can add 12 to both sides, get these to eliminate. So now I'm going to have 2m on the right side and 20 on the left side. Still good. I can divide both sides by two. M is equal to 10. If that was too fast, please go back and watch number one. I explained it much slower there. But, oh, I'm sorry. So what this means is that these two lines cross They cross when m equals 10, which means they cross one time. So the answer number two is they are gonna cross once. Let's move on to problem number three. Okay, so here's problem number three, another system. Uh, they don't equal the same thing, but you might have noticed we can make them like so. So negative 10y equals 4x plus 12. And then I've got negative 5y equals 2x plus 6. Now, what I tell the students is that there's a part of our brain somewhere that when we were learning how to do common denominators for fractions, we learned to see common multiples and things. We have to do this all the time when we go to the store. If you want to buy hot dogs and hamburger buns, I mean, and hot dog buns, you can buy them in a certain ratio where you actually have the same number of hot dogs as buns. And in this case, I see a negative 10y and a negative 5y, and I know that if I doubled the bottom row or I have the top row, they would end up with the same number of y's. I'm more of a multiplication person, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply the entire bottom row times 2. And the whole reason I'm doing this is so that they will both have a negative 10y as part of their equation. Let's see what happens. So the top row is unaffected. I still have negative 10y equals 4x plus 12. The bottom row, I'm gonna distribute that two. I'm gonna multiply every term by two. So two times negative 5y would be negative 10y. Two times 2x is 4x. 2 times 6 is 12. And you might notice something. They're the same line. If they're the same line, they're going to be graphed right over the top of each other. And if they're graphed right over the top of each other, they have infinite solutions. So the answer to this one, without any further work, is B. Let's move along to number 4. Okay, here's number four. We got 12y, always number your word. 12y equals 18x minus nine. 
4y equals 6x plus 3. So there's our system. And yeah, if you had watched the previous problem, you're going to notice that 4y and 12y, really easy to get them to be the same thing. So I'm going to multiply the bottom row times 3. I'm going to distribute a 3 to every single term. Top row stays unaffected. So I've still got 12y equals 18x minus 9. And now 3 times 4y would be 12y. That's what we wanted. We wanted them to have the same thing on the left side. 3 times 6x is 18x. Starting to look like it's going to be the same. 3 times 3 is positive 9. Oh, so they are not the same line. Close, but not. A lot of students will see this and go, oh, infinite answers. But no, it's not. So we can set, because they're equal to the same thing, we can set them equal to each other. Okay. So 18x minus 9 would equal 18x plus 9. Hmm. Interesting. If we were to take away 18x from both sides, we would have negative 9 equals positive 9? That doesn't seem to make any sense. That's because they are never, ever going to cross. Whenever you get something weird like this, where negative 9 is supposed to equal 9, and you just know that doesn't make sense, that's the equation's way of telling you, we're not going to cross, buddy. Looking back, in up, looking back up here, you can see... See these coefficients? When I say coefficient, I mean you see these numbers stuck on the x's? This is hinting at what the slope of the line is, and the slope is the same. These two lines are parallel. They are never going to touch. When you get to the bottom of your work and you have something like this, that means there's no solution. Not going to happen. Let's move along to problem number five. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to number my paper, number five, and I've got 2y equals negative x plus 6, and then 4y equals x. Wrote everything down right, everything's fine. Okay. Well, I could just double the top row. I can multiply everything in the top row by 2, which means that my system will look a little different. The bottom row will stay unaffected. 4y equals x, <clears throat> 2 times everything, that'd be 4y, 2 times, that'd be negative 2x, and then plus 12. They both equal 4y, that's what we wanted, so now we can set them equal to each other. Negative 2x plus 12 equals x. And now we can start doing some undo maneuvers to get the uh, variable by itself if possible. We could... Well, we could add 2x to both sides. These eliminate. 12 would equal 3x. Because that x is really 1x. So x plus 2x is 3x. And then we could divide both sides by 3. These eliminate. Because 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 1 times x is still going to be x. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I get x equals 4. And the question is, what does that mean? Well, that means that these two lines are going to cross they're going to cross at x equals 4 and if they cross once at x equals 4 that means they have one solution so for number 5 let me get back up here so for number 5 the answer is A let's move on to number 6 Okay, number six, 3x, we got another system here. 3x minus 6y equals 27, and x minus 2y equals 9. Oh, well, 27 and 9, that part of my brain is buzzing. I know that I can get them to be equal the same thing pretty easy. If I just multiply this bottom row times 3, which means I need to multiply every 
single turn times three. So the top row is gonna stay unaffected. That would be three X minus six Y equals 27, but the bottom row gets tripled. So that'd be three X minus six Y because three times X is three X. Three times negative two Y is negative six Y. And three times nine is 27. Oh, sweet. They're the same. If they're the same line, they cross always an infinite number of times. So we can stop working. So the answer to B is infinite. I'm sorry, the answer to six is B, which is infinite. Let's move on to number seven. Okay, number seven is actually the graph version of these problems. So instead of doing equation, you know, uh, shenanigans, we can just tell right away that yeah, there this one is going to cross once. So the the solution to this system is right here. It's where they cross, and that coordinate is negative two zero. Just a quick recap in case any of you parents are a little rough around the edges when it comes to graphing and identifying points. So every coordinate has an X value and a Y value, okay? You start at the origin, which is zero, zero, and you're always gonna move the X direction first. So we had to go left two spaces, which means the X value is negative two. And then we went up and down. Y is the up and down, but we didn't go up or down. We stayed on the we stayed on the x-axis. So that's why it's negative two zero. It's a very common mistake for your students to mix this up and put zero negative two, and then they just get it wrong because zero negative two is up here. I'm sorry, <laughs> that'd be zero two. Down here, this is zero negative two. And that is just that is just not the right spot. Let's move on to number eight. Well, number eight's tricky. Number eight does have two lines, but they are directly on top of each other. Therefore, number eight has infinite solutions. every single value they cross each other infinite solutions these are when the equations are the exact same line let's move on to number nine okay so number nine is a pair of parallel lines they will never ever cross each other which means there is no solution we're never going to have a coordinate where they are in the same place so you just simply write no solution that's all that's required. Let's move on to number 10. Number 10 is the last of our graphing section. It has one solution and it is right here where the two lines cross the one time. The X value is one, the Y value is two. So this coordinate is one, two. All right, let's move on to number 11. Okay, so for number 11, we've got an equation, and I'm just asking you to tell me which one of these values makes it true. Which one of these values makes sense? There's really two ways you can do this. You can either go the long route and start plugging all of these in one at a time, like put a two in for both x's and then do all the work and see if it balances. Or you can do this algebraically. Number 11, write down your numbers to keep your scrap work organized like always. So when I have 3x equals 2x plus 12, I just want to do some undo math. I just want to cancel some stuff out. I want to do some eliminations to get x by itself. So let's take away 2x from both sides. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Well, 3x minus 2x is just x. That's 1x. 2x minus 2x is nothing. That's 0, and that's what we wanted, nothing. So x would equal 12 because that's all I've got left on both sides. So the answer is D. We could have done this the long way by taking like all these numbers 
if I had plugged in 12, like if I had said 3 times 12 equals 2 times 12 plus 12, that's a lot of 12s. Well, 3 times 12 is 36. 2 times 12 is 24. Still have that guy. Well, 24 plus 12, that'd be 36 equals 36. And that's a true statement. So if you wanted to go the long way, you could just plug in numbers and just see which one came out to be true, or you could do the algebraic way and just figure it out. Let's move on to number 12. Okay, so I've got number 12 here, and that's 3x plus 4 equals 9x minus 8. Let's do some undo math and balance stuff out. Let's take away 3x from both sides to get these to eliminate. So now I'll have 4 equals 6x because 9x minus 3x is 6x and I still have a minus 8 kicking around. Now let's just add 8 to both sides. That's the opposite of negative 8. Well 4 plus 8 is 12. 6x is still there. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0 so they eliminate. That's what I wanted. Um, now I can just divide both sides by 6 12 divided by 6 is 2, 6x divided by 6, well, 6 divided by 6 is 1, so that'd just be 1x. x is equal to 2. Is that one of my possibilities? It is. Answer C. Let's move on to problem 13. Okay, so 13, uh, I really hate it when they use T as a variable, but it's just, I mean, just going to happen. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be very deliberate and say T minus 3 parentheses 4 minus T and parentheses. I put in this little hook on it just so I know it's a letter equals negative 24. Okay, so um, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I have to do what's in parentheses first. However, I don't know what t is worth, so I can't really do anything yet. Um, I don't have any exponents. Multiply and divide. Now, I do have multiplication because this is distribu the distributive property is multiplication. I've got to multiply 3 times, well, I have to multiply negative 3 by both of these. So I still have t. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 times a negative t. Now, remember, negative times negative gives you a positive product. So negative 3 times negative t is going to be positive 3t. And I still have a negative 24 over here. I can combine like terms. 1t and 3t makes 4t. So I've got 4t minus 12 equals negative 24. Now I'm going to add 12 to both sides and end up with 4t, negative 12 plus 12, eliminate, that makes 0, that's what I wanted. Now negative 24 plus 12, be careful when you do this, that's going to have to be negative 12. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I've just got 1t, and negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. Oh, I hope that's one of my possibilities. Yeah, it's B. Let's move on to number 14. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, 14 is a bit of a, a bit of a mess. Uh, I'm just gonna write it down. I'm gonna be very careful as I copy it down. A lot of a lot of really smart students mess these up because they just write the problem down incorrectly. So it's two parentheses, three R plus 4, end parentheses, minus 3, parentheses, r plus 1, end parentheses, equals 11. Whew! Okay, well, um, according to the order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, I should be doing what's in parentheses first. There's a problem, though. I don't know what r is worth, so I can't really multiply or add anything inside these parentheses. There are no exponents, so my next step is to multiply and divide, and the multiplication here is the distributive property. I'm going to have to multiply 2 times both of these terms, and I have to multiply negative 3 
times both of these terms. So let's get into it. Well, 2 times 3r would be 6r. 2 times 4 would be 8. Negative 3 times r would be negative 3r. And negative 3 times 1 would be negative 3. And everything's equal to 11. Now, combining like terms. I've got a 6r and a negative 3r. I like to underline everything with a variable once. It just helps me spot them. And I circle whole numbers and integers. So 6r minus 3r is going to be 3r. 8 minus 3 is going to be a positive 5. And it's still all equal to 11. Now I'm going to do some undo math. So let's take away 5 from both sides. Those eliminate. That's what I wanted. 5 minus 5 is 0. So I still have 3r equals... 11 minus 5 is 6 the last time I checked. I can divide both sides by 3. Let's write things a little closer together now. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 3r three divided by 3 is just going to be r because 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 1 times r is just r, so r would equal 2. Oh, I hope that's one of our possibilities. Yes, is. B. Let's get into number 15. Okay, number 15 is a lot. It's a lot. Because it's almost like eight different problems rolled into one. Which of these equations has a solution of x equals two? Select three that apply. Okay, so we could solve all these for x, but it might be faster in this case just to plug in two and see which ones come out to be true. Let's try A. Let's just try the plug in variety. Let's try using substitution and see what happens. All right, so 15A. I'm going to substitute in the two for X. So that'd be six parentheses, two times two minus one, end parentheses, equals four plus seven times two. So both right here and right here, I, I took this guy and I just plugged him in, I swapped him, I traded him in, I substituted in the two. Well, that would be six parentheses, two times two is four minus one, equals four plus seven times two is 14. That would be 6 times 4 minus 1 is 3, equals 4 plus 4, which is 18. 6 times 3, that's 18, equals 18. True! So when it says which equations, and it's like 3 that apply, it looks like A is a winner. Let's try B. Same method. 10 minus 3, and we're going to plug into 2, equals negative 2 times... 2 plus 4. So that was a plug-in, and that was a plug-in. Okay, so that'd be 10 minus 3 times 2 is 6. So that'd be 10 minus 6 equals, now this is, uh, that'd be negative 2 times 2 plus 4, which is 6. So I'm just doing what's in the parentheses first. Well, 10 minus 6 is 4. Negative 2 times 6 would be negative 12. Uh, no, I don't think so. That is not true, doesn't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and take B out of the running. Problem C, substituting in, we got negative three, parentheses, seven minus two. And then this is where I gotta plug in a two. Negative three, parentheses seven minus two X, which would be two times two, equals negative one minus four. And then we plug in a two, okay. Writing it down is sometimes the most important thing to slow down and make sure you got it right. So this will be negative 3, parentheses, 7 minus 4, because that's what 2 times 2 is, equals negative 1 minus 8, because 4 times 2 is 8. That would mean negative 3 times 7 minus 4 is 3, in, equals negative 1 minus it be negative 9, Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Oh, nice. True. That did work out. So 
We have to find three that apply, and it looks like we've already got two of them. Problem D. I'm going to have to really tread up the paper here. All right, D, which is 7x plus 12. So it'll be 7 times 2, substitution in, plus 12, equals 2, parentheses, 4, substitute in the 2, minus 5. Okay, so I've substituted in my 2's correctly. 7 times 2, that'd be 14, plus 12, equals 2, parentheses, 8 minus 5. So 14, oh wait, I'm sorry. So 14 plus 12, that would be 26, equals 2 times 3? Yeah, 8 minus 5 is 3. Well, that means that 26 would have to equal 6. Nope, not buying it. So D is out of the running. It's either got to be E or F. And this is great because if I solve one and find it, then I'm done. If I don't, I know it's the other one. At least that's the way it should work. Okay, so E, writing it with substitution, would be negative 5, parentheses, X. Oh, that'd be 2, plus 1, in parentheses, equals negative 4, minus 7, substitute into 2 for X. Okay, so that'd be negative 5 times 3 equals negative 4 minus 14, because 7 times 2 is 14. Uh, negative 5 times 3 would be negative 15 equals, well, negative 4 minus 14 would be negative 18. Nope. Not on my watch. So there's no way it can be E. Now, this means because they said to pick 3, I'm pretty sure F is going to work out, but... I just have to see it. It's my test, it's my name. I gotta do it anyway. So F, eight times two plus 11 equals nine, parentheses, five minus, plugging in a two, because that was an X, but now it's a, we're substituting. So that would be 16 plus 11 equals nine times three. 5 minus 2 is 3. Okay, so that'd be 16 plus, that'd be 27? Equals 27? Mm. I love it when that works out. Okay, so we are definitely answering A, C, and F for number 15. Let's get into 16. So 16 is just straight up asking us to figure it out without any help from multiple choice. We can't use the method we just used on 15. So I've got negative 3 parentheses x minus 4 n parentheses plus x equals 2x minus 12. Really, this is just a rigorous test of your ability to do the distributive property and to do undo steps. It's, it's a lot of muscle, but it's not, it's not complicated. So we're going to start with the distributive property, the multiplication. We're going to do negative 3 times both of these terms. Negative 3 times x would be negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 4. Remember, negative times negative gives you a positive product. That'd be plus 12. And then I have all this other stuff still left over. Combining like terms, negative 3x plus x would be negative 2x. And I still have plus 12. These almost look the same, but they're not. So I can add 2x to both sides to get these to eliminate. Then I can add 12 to both sides to get these to eliminate. And then I can divide both sides by four to get these to eliminate. And that means x would be equal to 6. So tentatively, I'm going to put a 6 up here. And the way to prove, the way to prove that it's right is that you take that 6 and you plug it into all these x's and it should balance out. Let's do it. Negative 3 times 6 minus 4, end parentheses, plus 6 equals 2. 
times 6 minus 12. Okay, well that'd be negative 3 times 2 plus 6 equals 12 minus 12. Okay, so that'd be negative 6 plus 6 equals 0. 0 equals 0. Yeah, negative 6 plus 6. Yeah, okay, so it balanced out. So we're right. X equals 6. Last problem, number 17. What value for x makes the following equation true? Uh, same as 16. We just got to work it out with no help. So there's the problem. The first thing I see I can do is the distributive property. I need to multiply 2 times both terms. Well, 2 times x is 2x. Two, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. I'm going to add on 21 and get that equal to negative 3. Combining like terms, I can put those together. So that would mean that 2x, uh, negative, that'd be negative 6 with a 21, that'd be plus 15 equals negative 3. Now I can take away 15 from both sides. So I'd have 2x, these eliminate because they make 0 equals negative 18. And then I could divide both sides by 2 to get these to eliminate. So x would equal negative 9. So tentatively, I've got an answer. I can say that x is equal to negative 9. And the way to check is to take that answer and to plug it in, well, I guess to that guy, and just see if the equation balances. 2 times negative 9 minus 3, in parentheses, plus 21 equals negative 3. Well, two times negative nine minus three would be negative twelve plus twenty-one equals negative three. Okay, well that'd be negative thirty-six plus twenty-one equals negative three. No, 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 no. Boo boo, that's not good. Negative twenty-four. That's better. Mr. Matthews made a boo boo. It's really important whenever you're working out problems to notice when you make mistakes. You should be constantly reviewing this kind of thing. This will happen even to people that teach math or they've been doing math forever. It is, it is almost as important as knowing the skill as being able to spot when you've made a mistake. Anyway, live in the moment. So negative 24 plus 21, it is negative 3. That's a true statement. And that concludes the study guide for the 8th grade 9-week exam. Thank you for watching. Check the description below for links to important documents and other wonderful things. This has been an episode from Math is Still Math.